Hey guys, um, this is as raw as it gets. Um, I'm sitting in the office, um, which is almost finished being renovated. Um, I'm just here to talk about that. Um, I'm a bit late to it, but this announcement of the um, of the 6K po uh, of the 6K Pro um, from Blackmagic Design, and this this I think is a um, a really really welcome camera to the lineup and i just want to talk a bit about my thoughts on it from the perspective of um someone who shoots a lot on both the Yosemite pro g2 and uh owns the original pocket 6k and uses that as a lot as a b cam with the ursa g2 um so just to recap really quick i think the obvious big additions that are awesome to see um with this camera is uh the same that the same that we got when the Ursa moved to the Ursa um, Mini Pro, which is inbuilt NDs with IR protection at two, four, and six stops. Uh, the addition of an additional XLR input, that's um, or mini XLR input, that's fantastic. Like we're often shooting interviews with um, with two mics, a, a wireless lapel, and a boom, and then we can always choose our preferred channel in post depending on you know kind of which we think sounds better um but i want to talk a bit about like who is this camera for like shane pointed this announcement out to me um the other day i'm recording this on my phone by the way that's why this looks like crap because i can't actually get to the cameras because this 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 carpet behind me got put down and um, we had to move everything out of that room into the gear room. So the gear room is just piled up with stuff. Um, yeah, I want to talk about like, who, who's this camera for? Like Shane was saying, oh, this looks cool. I don't think, um, I don't think we need it. And, I, and I'll, oh, I've got some other videos coming up about some camera purchases that we've made. Um, and look, I, I think he's, he's probably right. We don't have a need for it right now. But who is this camera for? Um, let me start that by saying like, just going off the specs alone and assuming that the image quality, the sensor and everything is exactly the same as the original um, Pocket 6K, which I think it is, um, this is probably the best value video camera or Super 35 cinema camera on the market. Um, at two and a half grand, the, the cost that the original Pocket 6K was at launch now with built-in NDs, now with two um, mini XLR inputs, an articulating screen that's way brighter, that's huge, that makes it way more useful, both for accessing menus and for being able to, to look at the screen and say you're shooting on sticks, not needing to put an additional monitor on top. And then with that, the addition of an OLED 1280 by 960 res um, little custom EVF to go on the top, that's Freaking awesome. That is awesome. So like to black magic, I'm just like far out guys. I don't know how you're delivering this at this price. This is fantastic. And we've had a few reliability, reliability issues along the way with our Ursa G2, zero with the 6K. It's just, it's just been, it's just worked. Um, yeah. So just want to start that off by saying this is incredible value for money. It's probably unmatched when you consider You've got um, Blackmagic RAW in there. You've also got ProRes in there up to 4K. Um, yeah, it's just it's just phenomenal in a, in a Super 35 size sensor with 6K resolution. Resolution, I think, is the least important thing, but it's nice to have there when you need it for a VFX shot or something, right? Okay, so who's the camera for? I think um, if you're a budding filmmaker, whether you're young, whether you're old, that let's say you haven't got all the cash in the world, um, there's a good chance this is the camera for you. I mean, the, the fact that it's Super 35 means that it's, and, it, and it's EF mount, means that this camera is gonna be compatible with a wide range of existing new uh, and used lenses, um, both stills and kind of cinema glass that can, that, that can have an interchangeable EF mount or be adapted to EF, right? Um, that's huge. Um, yeah, you don't have autofocus, but if you're focusing on like narrative filmmaking, you're generally not using that. I mean, it is getting used a bit more these days, I'll give you that, but if you're really practicing your, your craft and 
and you're, you're pulling focus with, with purpose and at specific points in time and that kind of thing, if you're shooting in that way, it's, it's a non-issue. And for all the features that it has, and yeah, having Blackmagic RAW in there and ProRes as an option, um, I just feel like for anyone in that camp, guys, this, this camera's a no-brainer, because, especially because of the freaking price. Like, absolutely awesome. Um, the others that I think this is for is for like video production companies, large and small, like our, you know, we're a small one. Um, but for us, even if this isn't an A cam, you know, we're using the, the, the G2 as our main sort of corporate and commercial video camera or digital cinema camera or whatever. Um, this automatically just becomes a better B cam uh, than the original 6K because you've got those NDs. So for us, yeah, we've got it all built in on the Ursa, but we've got to carry around if we're out shooting doco style or doing branded content away for a week, shooting with a client or indoors, we're outdoors, we're indoors, we're outdoors. Um, you know, the Ursa is really great for that. You know, it's that on the fly camera on the shoulder and the pocket might be riding on a dolly or it might be just be getting those second angles for, for interviews. But then, you know, you're doing those outside or you're doing inside and you're going wide open and there's windows, you need to be putting NDs on there. And, and one, of the, uh, one of the downsides to that sensor, and I'm assuming this one is the same sensor, it, is, is, it has got absolutely atrocious, atrocious infrared protection built in. So when you're using NDs on there, you really do need to have a really good UV IR filter. And um, I'd expect these new, um, the new NDs, the IR, they, it is listed as IR NDs, um, to perform about as well as the Ursa Mini Pro uh, G2 and Mini Pro um, uh, NDs do. And they, you know, they're pretty damn good. They're good. I've, I, I tested them out. They're not amazing, but they're pretty, pretty good. I recommend the Raw Light Optical Low Pass Filter with the Ursa G2, and we have that installed at all times. Um, I don't, and there is a, there is a Raw Light Filter for the 6K. I don't know. Um, we, we don't actually have it because we've got a magic booster on there most of the time these days. Um, I don't know if a raw light filter can be installed considering it's got the, the mechanical NDs now. So, so it'll be interesting to see how good the IR protection is on those, um, on those inbuilt NDs, whether it's going to be like quite equivalent to the, um, the Ursa Mini Pro G2. But I don't know if the sensor in that camera is just has better IR protection built in in some way than the one on the 6K, which has none or, or none that are very good. So it's going to be interesting to see that performance difference. But, um, but yeah, in terms of video production companies, I think large video production companies that have multiple teams, or even for us when Shane and I are both on shoots on different days, um, you know, we've got the G2, we've got the 6K, we've got uh, Fuji X-T3 and some, some older cameras. Um, but we don't have two in that A cam category, which for me, and I'm not talking for filmmaking, I'm talking for video and content production. You know, you want that camera with the inbuilt NDs, with decent onboard audio, with decent off-speed frame rates. Um, you know, that, that those sorts of features. And I think this suddenly, you know, it's kind of got all of those features that you need. No, it doesn't do the 120 at full sensor speed like the Ursa Mini Pro G2 is, but it's also far, 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 far cheaper. So um, whether you, it's just a better B cam than the original 6K, or it's a great second unit kind of camera, you know? Um, if you've got two shoots on the same day and two shooters going out, like that's, that's freaking awesome value. It's incredible. Um, now I want to I want to as someone that's used the 6K pretty much since soon after it came out, um, and I came to the um, the Blackmagic cameras moving over from Red. One thing I noticed big time with the uh, the Pocket 6K, and this is something to be aware of, especially for those that are thinking they're going to go around and shoot handheld with it with this OLED EVF. Um, the rolling shutter, the sensor read speed on this camera is probably it's it's biggest Achilles heel. It's quite a slow read speed. Um, I think it's around 19 milliseconds or something like that, or micro, what is it? Not microseconds, milliseconds, whatever it is, scanning down the camera. So when you're moving quickly, you see that it's like the old 5D days, that, that jello-y um, effect. And it, and it 
it's very noticeable in comparison to a camera like the um, the Ursa Mini Pro G2, which has really nice fast read speed and the motion cadence is fantastic. So it's a camera that works really well on sticks. It's a camera that works really well on a slider, works really well on a gimbal. And look, the 6K can, I mean, we don't use it this way because we've got the Ursa, but it, you know, on a weighted rig, um, it, it can be, you know, a good handheld option. But because these cameras are quite light, if you're going handheld, you get those sort of, the kind of micro jitters in there. And then, you know, that cannot be, you know, with a heavier camera, you don't get that because you kind of move more from the hips and everything. Um, but yeah, going around like this with an EVF, with the EVF, I mean, that does give you that third point of contact, but, um, uh, I'm, I'm sure some people are going to, you know, make an art out of it and, 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 and get away with it, but it's not a camera that I think works really well like that. I think the EVF, um, will be great for when you're using it on sticks, um, kind of in an interview, like say, you know, you're outside bright, bright sun somewhere, although the, the screen looks a lot better and brighter than the other one and you can kind of move it. The EVF is going to be great in that situation. Um, maybe if it was hanging from an easy rig, just checking the shot or something. But um, yeah, that's probably the one thing I'd, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure about it there. We'll see. But honestly, this price, these features, um, I'll tell you one thing about Blackmagic Design. They listen to customer feedback. Um, and the fact that they've added all these features to the camera and released it for the price that the original 6K was not very long ago. That's, that's had a price drop to, I think, two grand US now. Um, like, honestly, fantastic. And it's, it's great to have a company like them that is really pushing um, the industry forward and the limits of what can be done at these price points. And just, just the, access, the accessibility, the accessibility of, um, of these really good, um, I hope that was my really bad South African accent, um, the accessibility of these tools um, for more people, like high quality digital cinema tools. Yes, there are much better features and, and better cameras, but when you consider what this camera offers at this price, like the image quality and feature set, relative to the price. Yeah, they've, they've knocked it out of the park. And assuming image quality and everything is exactly the same as the 6K. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm amazed. I'm, yeah. And, and you know, cause, cause we'd consider getting a newer, maybe hybrid camera, you know, um, but you know, most of them don't have inbuilt NDs. And I, and I feel like this has maybe been a really smart way to capture some of that market that might have been going to get a, um, a Canon or a Sony um, something, even though they're mainly using it for video. Um, you know, the fact that you've got those inbuilt NDs and all those other the too many XLR inputs makes it much more of a true either digital cinema or, or video camera. So well done, Blackmagic. Um, will we get one? Not straight away, because um, we have no like need for it. Would I get, would we get one in the future? Very possibly. Um, I can't wait to see all the videos and everything come out of people using these things. Cause um, yeah, freaking awesome. Well done black magic. Um, we'll be back. Uh, we've been on a big break for those of you that actually, I mean, we're, we're a very small channel, but for those of you that tune in, we've had, um, had a lot going on both work wise, um, and some, some, uh, challenging, uh, uh, things happening that have nothing to do with work. Um, so, um, but, uh, we've got some, uh, new videos coming consistently from next week. And, and part, one of the things has been, you know, we've actually been renovating, uh, and painting and, and then behind separate to that, we've been, um, <laughs> yeah, really busy. It's like all the jobs that got put off when we were closed for, for COVID earlier in the year still happened, but happened later. And then all the things that we would have been doing later 
also happened later and it was just like ah oh, like kind of the end of the year and the, and the start of this year so um yeah um sorry rant rant out there we go that was my really good off-key singing really good really bad you know what i mean thanks